Y'all know I got the C10 in here and I'm uh, redo redoing a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, and I found out that the rear end is bad, so I gotta go through her. Quite a bit of pinion play there before the axles move. So that's how you know you got a bad rear end. Uh, plus, it was making some noise, anyways. So uh, I got a uh, Yukon Duragrip locker and a Master Rebuild kit here. Heavy duty. Comes with all the goodies. So I'm gonna go through this rear end and beef it up. Uh, it'll be nice to finally have a posse. Get some nice Crocs and socks on. Check those out. Hospital socks. Yay! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, yep, just drain her out, take her apart, and uh, I'll go through and show you guys how to do a basic rebuild on a Chevy 8.5 inch. This is one of the most common rear ends there is. It comes in Silverados, S10s, all sorts of stuff. So, oh, and check this out. Yukon launch! <laughs> so here's a look inside. This is just a basic axle, uh, no posi unit. Now you can see in here, these are the spider gears, this is their ring gear, the pinion gear is down there, you can see it has an R on it. At some point this was gone through I believe. So the first step is to actually pull out that uh, 5 16 bolt there that will pull out that shaft. And then uh, once the shaft's out, you can slightly push in on the axle shafts. See those bronze looking things right about there? Those are C-clips. That's what holds your axles in. Uh, so you got to pull those out and then slide the axles out so you can pull your carrier out pull out your main caps which hold down your bearings and then you can actually pull the whole carrier straight out for this I just use a little impact uh, here's the 5 16 bolt that holds in the pin well shit I just dropped that I was gonna show it to you but I just dropped it <laughs> uh, just basically a bolt so now I'm gonna spin it and hope that oh, frick it did that dang bolts getting caught up in there now I'm gonna have to go in there and fish it out before I continue motherfucker anyways Usually you can pull the pin out. Yep, you see, pin's just gonna fall straight through. It'll come out easy usually, so that's good. Uh, sometimes if you have a bad rear end uh, that, or something that's been welded or anything like that, sometimes that pin is harder to get out. Yeah, I got my flashlight set up there, and I'm gonna try and push in on this axle and video at the same time. And you see the C-clip just falls right off. So now that that's off, you can pull the axle straight out. About eight inches, uh, you should be able to see it through these holes here. You can see there's the gear, so I gotta come out a little further yet. There it is, it just dropped out of the carrier completely. Side note, gotta take off the drums to get the axles to come out. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal, usually. <laughs> I'm gonna make note of the factory shim before I pull this completely out. Should just pull pretty easily out. Put the shims back on. Or you can leave them in here for now. Uh, taking out the C-clips that I dropped. And then I gotta find that dang pin bolt. <sighs> Where the hell that went? Now part of the videos that people usually forget uh, is actually pulling out the pinion itself. Now uh, it's pretty easy, usually. Sometimes the pinion bearing is so messed up that you can't actually get this yoke off or the pinion to go through. So what I did, what I tried first, was I put the pinion nut back on there. Took a rubber hammer, hit the end of it. That didn't do jack, so then I moved up to a bigger hammer. Didn't you jack shit. So then I started rotating and pounding out on the yoke. So a couple hits. Obviously I did it harder than this. You can see it's starting to come apart. Um, now I can take off this nut, get this yoke off, and then the pinion should theoretically pull out because the yoke is what holds the bearing and the pinion sort of in place. Now if you look inside this yoke, I've never really had one that was that difficult to get off. And I think they use some sort of a Loctite type solution on this gear here, which is pretty dumb. Uh, you can see that there's crusty shit that's flaking off of there. So that probably explains why that was so hard to get off. It actually has a little stink to it too, like glue, so I don't know what the hell that is. Now you can see I have the pinion out and this rear end flipped over. You can see the wheel bearing, or the pinion bearing I mean, is still in there. Uh, so now I'm going to tap out the race and there's actually a uh, seal on the outside too. I'm not going to reuse it obviously so it doesn't matter if it gets damaged. So right there in the corners on the each side there you can see there's a cutout for a race punch. Uh, you can use anything really. 
as long as it doesn't damage the side of your case when you're pounding that out so that'll just pound down um, now I have a few different little options here that'll work but this one's a little short which makes it a little awkward so what it pretty much everyone has is a extension for a socket uh, it's probably not recommended but it works that fits in there and it gives you plenty of room to swing so you just tap it out it'll press everything out that way the big pinion bearing race on this side and that one just pounds out the opposite way so flip it over and pound it out this way towards the camera here and then the replacement ones go in and blah 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 so here's the pinion I'm gonna work on disassembling this and clean it up so I can reuse it now you can see that there is a crush sleeve on here and it's stuck on there pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a cutoff wheel there's multiple different ways to do this someone's gonna be like oh don't want to use a cutoff wheel oh! whatever I'm going to take a cutoff wheel, slowly cut uh, this off until I know it'll break off. Uh, I'm very good with one of these. This is basically what I use almost all day. So I'm very good and controlled and knowing how deep I am with the cut. Uh, now if you use a smaller wheel, you're going to have more accuracy. So I can have a little bit uh, less chance of nicking the, any of the other edges. Like I said, a lot of the times the crush sleeve will just come right off. Uh, with this one, I had to cut a little notch about partway through. And it released it just enough for it to come off. That was all it took. Um, and, then, and then I'm going to take my uh, oxyacetylene torch and heat this up. Hold this upside down, probably in my press here. Heat that bearing up until it just falls off because it will expand and it will eventually fall off. So I actually had to cut off the bearing so I could get direct heat on that. Uh, race and there you can see she fell off now I'm just gonna let it cool for a bit and uh, keep cleaning up that housing first I usually like to start with some foaming degreaser uh, just to get the big shit throw a coat of that on there then wash it down with some soap water blow it all out with the air nozzle do it again and then uh, hit it a couple times with the brake cleaner doesn't matter what you use I guess but that's just kind of what I use uh, this rear end was pretty clean uh, the only thing that was bad in it was the pinion bearing so uh there's no real big shrapnel or anything like that. I'll make sure you clean your magnet. I think this one has the magnet right here. And then I also cleaned the uh, gasket surface before I did that. So now that I have this all cleaned, uh, I can take apart my carrier, which is down there in the pan. I can take apart my carrier, and I can put that ring on my new Yukon Duragrip locker. One thing I forgot to mention real quick, uh, you want to make sure that the main cap bolt holes are completely clean uh, since I sprayed a bunch of stuff in there the, the holes are actually full of uh, cleaner so you want to go ahead and blow them out make sure they're clean so, uh, so here right now I have the pinion and it's cooled down now a thing of note is there is one shim on there so I'm going to remove that shim and then I'm going to clean up the rest of this pinion you can see it's got some crud on there and then I'll get ready to put this pinion back in now in the instructions it recommends to use the uh, same shimming that was in originally and then adjust based off that so that's what I'm gonna do so that's again why I note which shim is on this pinion currently so looking at the instructions here for the 8.5 inch uh, you can see the setup specs see 14 and 19 is the number of inch pound preload bearing on the pinion so what I'm gonna do and what a lot of people do since a lot of people don't have an inch foot-pounds torque wrench, which would be ideal, I actually have a regular wrench, which is 15 inches long from the head to that hole. And then I have a old can. Uh, you can really use anything, which I strung a string, string through, and then I just have some keys in there for counterweight, and I weighed it, and it's exactly one pound. So if I hang this from this hole, it should theoretically give me 15 inch pounds of torque because it's 15 times one pound which is basically yeah uh, of course you have the weight of the wrench I'm not a count, uh, counting that in there another way you can do it is just by feel if you know what it feels like uh, this is for setup it's pretty close there's no crush sleeve in there yet uh, because you want to set it all up without the crush sleeve because the crush sleeve is only crushable once and then uh, once I have that set to the inch pounds I can go ahead and uh, put my carrier in with the proper shims um, and then start doing the uh, lead paint to uh, check the pattern and the pinion depth and all that shit. So here I have my original carrier and the ring gear. Now I have these bolts 
Uh, these are the bolts that come out of the uh, ring gear. They're actually a reverse thread, so make sure when you put them in, you put them in the right way. Lefty tighty, righty loosey, ass backwards, I know. Now these ring gears like to be a pain in the ass to come off of these. So what I'm doing is I'm just threading a few of these bolts back in, a couple threads, and then what I did was I pounded on these heads of these bolts with a rubber hammer, and it started to move. Now I'm going to take out the bolts. Basically do the same thing with the breaker bar and sort of pound around this slowly. Now note that I have a towel folded in a few times so that when this does drop, it drops on something soft, not a metal surface obviously because it'll mess up your gears. <laughs> there she be. Now again I'm paying special attention to the uh, bolts for the ring gear here. Or the tapped holes, uh, they're closed, not open, so they're not all the way through. So I just sprayed some brake cleaner in there and I'm going to blow them out again. Now I also inspected this to make sure that there's no uh, excessive wear on any of these teeth or broken teeth, obviously. Uh, the wear pattern is pretty good on this, uh, so I think it's it was probably set up fairly well, whoever did it last. Uh, so this is still a good ring gear. I love these units. They're nice. Don't have to mess with them. You just take them right out of the box, throw your ring gear on, and they're set. See, a lot of the other ones you actually have to take and put a locking plate in here, but not with this one, the way this is set up. Super easy for the user. Uh, so all I have to do there is just put the ring gear on and remember to uh, lock tight or use the supplied um, thread locker that they have in this kit. Now this kit here is again just a basic master kit. Uh, or a basic rebuild kit, I should say. It's considered a master kit. Has everything in it needed. All the bearings, seals, even bolts, uh, lead paint, etc. So, um, first, like I said, I'm going to start with setting this ring gear on here and then torquing it to spec with the sealant. And then I will start uh, messing with the bearings and the shims and all that. The easiest, easiest way to put on these carrier bearings is actually uh, to put these in a deep fryer and let them get to about 300 degrees and then you can actually literally just set them on there and they'll pop right on and set themselves. But anyways, what I'm doing and what most people are going to do is use a shop press. Now you got to obviously make sure that you have the smaller side faced up because that's the way they sit. So now the most important thing is to make sure that this bearing is seated all the way, completely all the way flush here. here. Uh, so you have to get a little bit creative, and I will show you how I do that. Now outside of the bearing pressing on straight, uh, the second most important thing is that the bearing actually still spins. So a lot of the time, what I'll do is I'll spin it, and I'll crank it, and I'll pump this at the same time. But there is still some gap there. You can see the light through the other side over there. Okay, and show you why. See, I have a socket here. Now, you can see that the part of the carrier here is flush with the bearing. Well, unless you have the exact perfect size pressing tool, you're not going to be able to get that perfectly lined up. So what I do is whenever I do any rear end or any project with any kind of bearing, I always, always, always keep the old races. Now, a lot of the times these are all different sizes. If you look at this one here, it's nearly identical to the size of that uh, race there. So the socket, now this is going to fit in there nicely and because it's a conical type shape it'll actually hold the socket into place. Now you can see that I threw this together. Uh, I have about a 235 shim on the right side and about 200 shim on the left side. So I originally start off with a 200 on each side and it seemed like my pinion is too close just because of the way it sounded and it just seemed like the pinion was a little bit too close to the ring gear so I took a spacer out of this side, a little bit out of this side and now it seems a little more appropriate so now that I think it's approximately close uh, I'm going to take some lead paint which comes with the Yukon kit here 
It's a lead paint, comes with the brush also. And the pinion is also already set uh, with the crushed sleeve and everything's good to go with that. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to take some lead paint and cover about a quarter or to a third of the total gear surface here. Um, both sides. Gap bolts are torqued to 60 pounds as spec says. Um, so that's important and you want to make sure when you're torquing them that you torque evenly and that the gear still spins on its own. Um, and it's not chunky feeling. If it's chunky feeling then you probably got some junk in there. Now you can see I did the uh, lead paint procedure and I am going based off of this Yukon Gear and Axle instruction book. Now this is like a science setting up a rear end as far as uh, the patterns are concerned. So I'm just going to make this simple and kind of show you the basics of what I got. Um, there's a lot of stuff online about how to set these up so just do your research. Um, I painted about, I don't know, eight teeth on here and you can see this is the coast side which is the more important side when you have used gears. You can see that dark black spot in the gear there that's where it's rubbing. That's where the pinion gear makes contact. That's where it's meshing. Now that one you can see it's fairly well centered on the gear itself but it's a little bit too deep into the, into the gear so that would imply that the pinion is too close. Now on the drive side which is not as important but uh, still something to consider you can see that the pattern there is on the inside which I would also gather that that is means the pinion is too close now the backlash on this is was also checked um, backlash is basically the amount that the ring gear will spin without the pinion moving so you hold the pinion still and you can kinda s you can almost just barely hear it and feel it let's see if I can set this camera up to be stationary enough Away, towards, away, towards, away, towards. It's just about the thickness of a piece of paper. Uh, this one is set between six and ten thousandths. Um, I used a little digital caliper and a uh, block, magnetic block. Uh, I don't actually have a dial indicator, so that's what I had to do. Um, I got a few different readings between four and ten thousandths, so I just called it good. Now I get this set as good as it's going to be set. So now what I can do is I can pull out this pin which keeps the axles from sliding in all the way so I can slide in the axles and put in the C-clips and then pu push the axles back out and then put this pin back in and then I just gotta put on the cover and add fluid and it's done next time I'd recommend using some kind of setup bearing or uh, the old bearing because you don't really wanna go through put the bearing on and then have an eighty dollar loss on a bearing when you have to press it back off and put on different size shims now you can see that on each side there is a cutout or a notch for a bearing, uh, what the hell is it called? A race, what the fuck's it called? God damn it. <laughs> a race, a race punch. So it's April in Minnesota and I noticed neither of my babies got rear ends. What the fuck? No rear end there. It's right there. No rear end there. It's right there. So I guess I'm hard on rear ends. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> ciao, ciao, ladies. <laughs> <coughs>